All right, it's a cold and rainy day in uh, December. And my Amada, my baby, she has a uh, bad catalytic converter on the right side, the passenger side. So I'm gonna get hot and tear into it. Shouts out to Rock Auto. They got this catalytic converter to me in like two days and it's from it's actually from uh eastern catalytic they're the same ones who we got the converter for for the suburban we got the uh the catalytic converter from rock auto for the suburban years ago but uh this is what the cat looks like it's actually very similar to the factory cat except their reinforcements right where the factory cat likes to break factory cat usually breaks right here all the way around and they put some reinforcement right there so and uh, they sent some they sent a new gasket and new cat to B pipe studs and uh, bolts and studs and nuts and new bolts for the heat shield so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this thing and uh, see you in a little bit. First thing we're gonna do is uh, disconnect the negative battery terminal. Then we're gonna jack and support the front of the vehicle. You can adjust to the uh, right front since that's the side we're working on and go ahead and remove the right front wheel. Next up, we're gonna remove the, the, uh, the splash guard to give us easier access to the exhaust manifold which is behind there. With the inner splash guard removed, we can see the front O2 sensor and uh, that needs to be removed. And we can see the heat shield bolts. There's one there, there's a few up top. We need to get those out and once we get the heat shield off, we'll be able to get to the uh, to the exhaust manifold nuts. So what we're gonna do is hit the oxygen sensor and the heat shield bolts with some uh, penetrating uh, oil. Now we move the two bolts. Let's see, one and two. One right there, and the other one right there for the engine mount on the right side. It's one 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolt goes right there. I don't know if you can see my point. And by we loosened this, the power standard reservoir bracket, by loosening that, I was able to pull the heat shield out through the top. All right, let's see if I could get the manifold out without removing the actual engine mount. All right. If I get hot on the exhaust manifold bolts, that bass is right there. I could not get that thing turned. Even with the impact wrench, it started to round it, round it up. So before I get hot in the uh, exhaust manifold nuts, mine look almost brand new. There's, there's no rust on those things. My truck has 100 and, I think I'm at like 197,000, uh, 197,000 miles. I'll verify and I'll put it in there. I just make a little note in the video, but you can see it, no rust. And they just started using that chemical on the road in Virginia in the wintertime a few years ago. All right, let's get it out. You go underneath the truck and you loosen, remove that nut and that nut for the B pipe. And that connects the B pipe to the catalytic converter slash exhaust manifold and now we'll get started pulling the nuts off that hold the uh, exhaust manifold to the actual engine block all right i got it out the exhaust manifold and catalytic converters out of the vehicle few things i did not remove the engine mount you can see it right there what i did do was loosen it up 
you can see the four bolts right there well the four hole one two three four I loosen it up it's still there it's just it's just loose and I loosen the two on top that I showed you earlier but it's still there I just loosen it up and jacked up the, the engine so the engines raised up and the stud stayed in the nuts the nuts look almost like when they went in surprisingly the two uh, nuts holding the B pipe to the exhaust uh, to the catalytic converter they spun right off I thought they were gonna break or round up but they came right off this is what I like to use it's called free all this thing is a beast it works a few seconds or a few minutes and it'll come off let me show you the actual uh, manifold and cat out of the vehicle all right here we go this is the catalytic converter with about hundred and ninety something thousand miles on it Nissan I do not know what you were thinking but this is a crappy design because what they did was see the flange it, it doesn't go all the way it's cut right here for expansion but the problem is because it's cut it's the whole thing isn't supporting the weight of the catalytic converter so what ends up happening is and sure enough I got the crack I don't know if you can see it but I got the Nissan crack of death right there and it looks like one right there but this is the main this usually where it cracks right in line with that flange the gap so it's cracked right there and it's working its way all the way around so if you have a Nissan Armada Nissan Titan Infinity QX was it 56 50 whatever it is it's not if it's when you have to replace these bad boys like I said the nut came right off uh, let me see there was none of the bolts or uh, nuts gave me any trouble except for one exhaust heat shield bolt broke off I don't care they sent new nuts with the new uh, manifold this one I couldn't get it out but the heat shield the hole widened around it so it just slid off and the doggone oxygen sensor this is something you do not do but I found a way to get it out with the oxygen sensor still in these things are very expensive so that's gonna get reused I'm gonna work on getting it out I'll get it out because I'm not buying another one I can tell you that uh, but let me show you the new one I bought next to this old one all right this is the new one from a uh, this is a new exhaust manifold slash catalytic converter and if you notice it's even if the heat shield wasn't there it's a little bit smaller because it's supposed to be more efficient and uh, it comes with the mounting points for the uh, heat shield and if you notice it's the same style but uh, the tubing is different the way they put it together so actually yeah it's it's a it's an OEM design but they put this bracket right here to weld it on see there's none here so the weight is being carried by these two studs this little piece of flange so it, when it the exhaust heats up and stuff it cracks right here this one has a little bracket a little support that they weld it in and that's supposed to uh, make it stronger got the bung for the uh, for the air fuel ratio on sensor O2 sensor everything looks good I'm gonna just make sure the holes line up one thing I will say about Nissan their exhaust uh, manifold gasket is freaking awesome these things are a great design the studs and the nuts holding the exhaust manifold to the engine to the head awesome design so shouts out to Nissan for that one but that doggone the actual manifold itself is garbage tighten up Nissan All right, the new manifold is on uh, in place it's not mounted up I uh, had a hard time getting the uh, the exhaust manifold to B pipe getting the studs to slide into the hole and the flange and the rest of the exhaust for the B pipe I have to put my foot in the muffler and push back but it's in Okay. 
Yep, there it is. Those two right there. Uh, that one and that one. All right, they're not tight. I'm gonna leave everything loose until the manifold is torqued into place because that's the most important thing. Once that's, that's torqued up, then I could start uh, tightening these and putting the heat shield back in and the oxygen sensor and the engine mount. All right. Oxygen sensors back in, the exhaust manifold is torqued up, heat shield is back on, dipstick is back in. Uh, time to tighten up the power serum pump reservoir bracket, and I'll tighten up the catalytic converter to B pipe bolts, put the splash shield back in, and put the wheel back on, and it should be time to fire up. All right, that's the first start with the new catalytic converter in. Splash guard back in, the wheel back on, everything is back together. Let me tell you something, that was some work. If you're gonna attempt it on your own, good luck. I'm not saying that it's not like impossible, I mean, I did it, but I've been working in vehicles since as far back as I can remember. Was it like extremely hard? No, I've done much, much harder, but it was not easy. So I'm going to use my scan tool, turn off the check engine light, and we'll see how everything goes. See you in the next one. I just finished the, uh, the break-in procedure. And uh, basically, you let it idle for five minutes. Don't touch the accelerator. After five minutes, 2,500 RPMs for two minutes. And after two minutes, at 2,500 RPM, let it cool down. After that, road test.